Hello and welcome to today's broadcast. Today is Monday, the day after Mother's Day, and today we are going to be talking about what it means to age successfully for you. And we are going to use the trifecta approach or what I'd like to teach here in this community, and that is fasting long, feasting well, and training smart. And I'm gonna hopefully help you define what that means for you. So welcome if you're joining us. My name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman online course and community. And here on Mondays and Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, I go live. Uh, so so we as a community can get together and discuss some of the topics that we uh, find that we are either struggling with or finding success with as we're going through this aging process. So I really do believe that aging successfully should be the goal that we are all striving for. Um, recent studies and articles have been written on the fact that aging is now considered a disease. And it is a disease because of the way in which we are actually aging. And I hope to end the cycle of disease here with this community of women and really give you some tools and tips and tricks on how you can really define what aging means for you and do it successfully. <coughs> so aging successfully for me means that I am going to go about my life the way I choose fit for me and really make decisions for myself health and wellness wise and even activity wise that are beneficial to me as a woman and what I want to do with my family. So I, you know, laughingly or lovingly joke about how, you know, I don't ever want to be that woman that falls down and can't get herself back up. I don't want to be the woman that has to be put away somewhere because I can no longer physically take care of myself. There might be a point down the road where that might happen. I'm hoping that's late into my 90s, but for the next 40 years or so, I really want to be able to do things as I do them today and do them with some grace and do this, do them with some fun and some energy. And I believe that we really do have the power to dictate that aging process and how successful we want to be at. So it really does start with fending off a lot of these age related diseases. And a lot of us here I know are suffering or were suffering from a lot of those, myself included, when I was suffering from having that diabetic, um, state knocking on my front door as a pre-diabetic woman and how I was suffering from insulin resistance and a lot of what that was doing to my cognitive functions as well and really how I was going about living my life because I did not feel well, I did, did not feel confident, and I did feel like I was breaking down and becoming a sick woman at at the stage of just my late 40s. I wasn't even in menopause yet, and so I was terrified about what menopause was gonna do to me, knowing where I was headed just being in a perimenopausal state. And so I believe that fasting long, feasting well, and training smart is the trifecta to aging successfully. But I wanna take it a step further here for us today in this community, and what I really like to teach in all of the courses that I teach for, for the women here in this community. And that is defining what that means for us as individuals. So fasting long enough to reverse the age-related diseases that you might be suffering from today. Feasting well enough to support what it is that we want to do in our feast, our fasted state and live a happy and healthy life around food, and then training smart enough to enhance the overall well-being that we show up as, as women and the functionality that we wanna have in our everyday life. So we don't wanna find ourselves injured, but we also don't wanna become so sedentary that things start to freeze up and lock up on us and we're no longer to live the life that we wanna live. I know for me, and Michael has the same opinion, is that we want to be those grandparents that run around the park with our grandkids. We wanna be able to go on cruises with our family. We wanna be able to go on hikes. We, I wanna be able to run um, for many, many years to come, and I won't be able to do that if I don't really accept what training smart enough means for me. So let's break down fasting long enough. We have to fast long enough consistently over time to reverse 
what is aging us. And for a lot of us women, especially heading into these perimenopausal uh, initial stages and then living as a postmenopausal woman, it is sugar. And sh what sugar is doing to us in that slow breakdown phase. And it does start for a lot of us as being hypoglycemic. And that was the condition a lot of us were suffering from or had to deal with as younger women. That translates into insulin resistance where the problems really start to affect how we're aging and can lead into those diabetic states and eventually into those um, diseases that affect our brain, such as dementia and Alzheimer's. So we have to fast long enough for us wherever it is we are today and what it is that we are unhappy with. What I like to teach in that intermittent fasting course that I teach is that we have to reset or we have an opportunity to reset what is going on with us metabolically once we have utilized what we have stored up over the years. So we know that through the 20 hour fast and the four hour feast. How long you have to do that for you or that enough portion of that is going to be very personal to you and how well your body metabolically adjusts. What we want to shoot for, and I think what, what is not talked um, about often enough um, with this lifestyle that a lot of us are really searching for is having that opportunity to be metabolically flexible, meaning that we can jump in and out of a state of healing, which is also known as ketosis, um, and or um, or um, what what I, the words failing me, not ketosis, but autophagy. So those are are kind of interchangeable in a sense in the fact that when we're in a state of autophagy or when we're in that state of ketosis, we are healing. What we're healing is just dependent on us as individual women and where we are starting this process. So you have to figure out for you as an individual woman what fasting long enough is going to mean for you so that you can age successfully and not be put into that category of aging is a disease. We want to fend off all those age-related diseases. And then feasting well enough, meaning that we don't have to follow a diet that's so strictly regimented that we can't live our life. This is coming off the heels of a Mother's Day weekend. We want to make sure that we can participate with our family in social events and celebratory events and that we're not going to be so tied up into a box and set of rules that we can no longer practice what I call memory making moments. So we have to figure out what feasting well enough for us is as individual women so that we can live healthy and free around food, but support what it is that we're going to do in that healing phase of our day, which is that fasting window. And then the third concept is training smart enough. So I was just on a consult call today with a woman we were talking about this. What does it mean as we start to age and we start to notice that we're losing some of that muscle tone that we had or we feel like our body's hoarding fat and we never had those problems before? We never really think about the seasons of life that we're in and how our life and how we function through our everyday has changed. So I didn't have to do strength training on my upper body when I was hauling toddlers around, when I was picking up 20 to 30 pound human beings frequently throughout the day and putting them in car seats and putting them in strollers and putting them in a crib and helping them walk around. Like my upper body was really fit and strong because I was in that season of my life. I don't pick up little kids anymore. I don't have grandkids yet. And my life outside of my little window that I choose to work out is pretty sedentary. So when I think about the season of life that I'm currently in, I have to proactively make sure that I'm putting my body in physical states where I can maintain what it is that I want to have as I'm aging as a woman. So I have to seek out activity, otherwise I'm very sedentary. I had that aha moment when I first purchased a fitness tracker and realized if I'm not on my treadmill running or I'm not out for a walk, I'm a very sedentary woman. And that helps me realize that there's a reason why I'm losing some muscle tone or there's a reason why I might be hoarding a little bit more body fat other than the fact that I'm aging and my hormones are changing. It's because my life is now sedentary. It's a little different than it was when I was a younger woman and I was chasing around little kids and getting in and out of the car all day, taking them to all their events and activities. I'm an independent woman now, I don't have to do that anymore. So we have to come back to reality as well when we start to criticize our body and judge what it's going through and take into consideration 
what season of life we're in and how we are living our life. I love my life today. I love that I don't have toddlers hanging on my legs and I'm not having to carry them in and out of the house, but there's a cost to that as well. And that is the fact that I'm just not as active as I once was when I was playing in that role as a mother. So we have to figure out what fasting long enough means for us so we can reverse the age-related diseases a lot of us are suffering from as we're going through hormonal changes. We have to feast well enough that we are healthy around food and that the social and emotional aspects of what it is we say we want for ourselves can fit in to the lifestyle that we also have created for ourselves socially and with the family that we're living with. And then we wanna make sure that we are training smart enough. How do we see ourselves moving about our life in these future seasons? And what physical activities do we want to be able to participate in? And are we doing the things to make sure that will happen? In my opinion, that is the true definition of aging successfully. And I do believe that all women have the opportunity to take control of those situations and incorporate those three things into lifestyles that we wanna create for ourselves so that we can have everything that we say that we want to have. As a 54 year old woman who's fasting long enough, feasting well enough and training smart enough, I am doing all of the things today physically that in my exercise routines that I was doing in my 30s and 40s and I would have to say that I'm doing it in such a more emotionally intelligent and, and balanced way and I'm doing it in such a more educated way as well as far as how it is that I'm pro approaching the things that I want to have in my life whereas when I was younger I d often did it in a very emotionally desperate type of state and I don't think that that was always the healthiest way for me as well. So a lot of women need to figure this out for themselves with the basis and the, the foundation of information of what intermittent fasting and really establishing a keto-like lifestyle can be for us. It just makes sense for us and it will really help you uh, develop a lifestyle that you wanna have with the way that you want your body to look and a way in which you wanna live your life without being so tied up in something that's gonna be so stringent and so full of rules that you can't be happy with the life that you're living and the body that you're living with in at the same time. And that's really what we wanna have, a happy life and a happiness about the body that we're living in so that we can actually age successfully the way we are defining that for ourselves. So I'm gonna welcome everyone. If you haven't already done so, please make sure that you leave me a comment in the comment section so that I can welcome you to today's community conversation and answer any questions or comments that you might have. I hope you all had an amazing Mother's Day yesterday. Um, you know, the one thing I always like to say about Mother's Day is that we always have to stop and consider what mothers really are. And so many of us as women have played the role of mother in so many um, different aspects of our life and the way that we uh, choose to have relationships with people so I hope that you um, had uh, some love and some grace served upon you yesterday during your Mother's Day however it is that you fell into that role for your life as well I know we had an amazing time yesterday our kids two teenagers decided that they were gonna cook a brunch for us us me and uh, clean up the entire kitchen and they did just that it was it was such a great time and then we spent the day um, gardening in our yard and, and it was such a blessing for me as a mom because so many neighbors walked past this yesterday when they saw all four of us working together in our front yard planting some stuff in in the garden um, and how great it was to see kids with their parents doing work around the house and so I felt super blessed that we have such amazing kids that were willing to give up their Sunday to spend time with us Mother's Day or not didn't matter that they were just willing to spend some time with us in the yard and so that made me feel really good as a mom as well okay so let me see what we got here Amy is here with us she's a 2017 grad Aaron I absolutely I'm absolutely loving this fantastic Aaron I'm super glad that you're here with us today uh, Monica hello Teresa from Texas she's a graduate from 2018 and currently in our midlife mindset shift course uh, Dolores hello from Washington Coast October 2019 grad always love your insight thank you so much for joining us Dolores Wendy can you drink water while fasting yes for sure it's highly recommended um, and um, with the addition of some electrolytes in your water as well so I only uh, teach and encourage uh, water aided fasting I don't personally have any experience with dry fasting and some of the research that I've personally found it's not something that I would recommend but I know everyone has their own way of doing things um, okay so that was on Facebook let me see who we have over here on YouTube um, and I posted something today 
um, as my Monday quarantine check-in that uh, I asked if you guys would benefit from Michael and I doing a little bit of vlogging about how we go about our fasting day and what we do in our feasting window and what we're doing in some of the training that we're doing and I got a resounding yes that you guys would be interested in that so we're gonna be working on a little bit of that behind the scenes as well doing some vlogging of our everyday uh, life and what we're doing in our lifestyle um, I just ask that you give us a little bit of grace and a little bit of um, time to get the vlog feel down we're pretty new to it but we're gonna do our best to to share with you guys what it is we're doing to create this lifestyle that we love so much in our everyday life uh, Robin hello from the May course glad to have you with us girlfriend you guys are starting week two I hope you're ready for that Denise um, in our May class as well Robin January 2020 grad Eva I'm in your current course well three May students are here with us today Michelle October 2018 grad always good to have you with us girlfriend uh, Katrina April 2020 grad and she took our F3 course so you know about fasting long feasting well and training smart uh, Deb uh, 2017 grad always good to have you with us as well uh, Katrina's here I uh, love the color of your sweatshirt have to get one of those yeah it's cool so this is in our shop um, a little disclaimer about this sweatshirt I absolutely love it it's the brand um, the canvas brand that I absolutely love with shirts I got it because I chose this one because it has a really wide neck right here which I really like uh, but the disclaimer is they run a little small so this is actually an extra large I love big like boyfriend husband type size sweatshirts husband not boyfriend um, and um, this one is very athletic fitting so it fits very straight down the sides but I love the length of the arms like I said I love the cut of the neck and the inside of this sweatshirt is super super soft and um, I love it so um, it's on my shop and it's on my uh, YouTube page if you guys want to go check it out it's super super comfy and for those of you who get cold during your fasting window this is one of those nice snuggly uh, sweatshirts that'll keep you warm for sure um, Michelle good to have you with us November 2019 grad um, Sonia hello November 7 2017 all of my um, old school girls are coming in to check us out um, yeah sugar is a lot of people's uh, battle for sure Deb but I'll tell you what when you really hone in on um, and Deb I don't know if you've been in our midlife mindset shift course but you should join us in there we do a lot of this type of work uh, we do a logic statement called if then if this then that um, and we're really trying to narrow down like if we say we want a thing then why are we not willing to do what it takes to get there or if I say I want this then I have to be willing to do that um, and so we go through phases right in seasons where we're really ready to hunker down on some things and then there's sometimes we just feel like we need to loosen up but um, sugar is one of those things that we have to really find the appropriate place for it in our life because the reality is we can over consume it but if we if we pull it completely out of our life then it's life's not that fun if you can't ever have sugar again so we have to find that happy medium and that's really where that enough word comes in is fast long enough feast well enough and train smart enough and if you can find a good combination of those three things that's where we really start to create a little bit of flexibility and we can put in those leniency times uh, where we can add a little bit more in that maybe we don't do on an everyday basis so it's a battle for everyone for sure uh, Christy current class question any instructions I should know about um, having had gastric bypass surgery I would say just go with whatever guidelines that your doctor gave to you and whoever it is you're working with post surgery and then it's always a how do you look and feel so when you consume some food and I know with gastric bypass surgery it's usually like the fats that can be problematic I think um, um, and there are certain foods that your body just has a hard time digesting so you have to just play with that under the you know guidelines of what your doctor recommended so just go with how your body's looking and feeling um, and then just know that in a fasted state that is the best place to heal for sure and hopefully you'll be able to feel the benefits of that um, for yourself as well and then Angie uh, March 2020 IF happy belated Mother's Day thank you so much I appreciate that uh, Stephanie uh, January 2019 grad question I fast 19 to 20 hours a day and I work out daily first thing in the morning I don't break my fast until four or five after hours after my workout is that bad no I don't break my fast after my workout either um, I I take what I do in my workout session to enhance what I'm going to do continuing through my fast and I haven't had any negative um, 
reactions to that in my body at all. I don't feel super hungry. I don't feel weak. I don't feel any of those things. And I think that's because I am metabolically flexible. Um, so I work out in the morning generally, and then I go all day and then I break my fast around four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I do dirty up my fast a little bit. I don't know if that makes any difference, but I don't do it with any kind of protein or anything. So it's just a pre-workout drink that I have, but it hasn't negatively affected me in any way, fasting or feasting. And then Janet, April 2018, so glad to be catching you live. Thank you for being such a positive, reassuring presence through this very stressful time. Yeah, Janet, for sure. Um, we have to, as women, come together and talk about all these things that are frustrating us so we feel normal. So it's my pleasure to share as much as I can with you guys, and I always appreciate your guys' input as well. And then uh, Carson, I've been having lots of diarrhea lately. Do you know um, how I can stop it? Um, uh, I would say it could be if you've just increased your magnesium, that could be it. Magnesium is one of those things that can be a little tough on your digestive system. Um, it could be a process of your body cleansing itself out, so it doesn't always have to necessarily be a bad thing. Uh, maybe pull back on some of the fibrous type of foods that you've been eating. So if you've been adding in some... Um, uh, lots of vegetables recently maybe pull back a little bit on that and then I would do them all like slowly and so you can figure out uh, what it is that could be causing you some issues um, Valerie November 2019 grad um, Diane has so much knowledge join her I have class if you haven't I'm lean and strong six months after the class Valerie good for you girlfriend uh, so Valerie took our course six months ago and she's lean and strong so if you want to be able to say that definitely jump into the class I'll help you any way I can so I appreciate that Dinah uh, 2019 grad fasting feasting well fantastic I love to hear it Tammy do you take a probiotic what advice would you give for gut health I don't take a probiotic at all I think the best thing you can do for your gut is keep it empty um, so fasting long and learning how to feast clean for you uh, would be the best way to heal your gut if it's something that you think is serious I would definitely talk to your doctor about it but the everyday person a really clean fast could be enough to really give your body and your gut specifically an opportunity to have a break from breaking things down and cleanse itself out and balance itself out and then really pay attention to the signs and signals your body's sending you when you break your fast and put food into it and if you have a negative reaction to something you have to make that connection to that thing and what your body's telling you and then you have to make the determination whether that's worth it or not or if you need to eliminate it from your diet um Danny, good to have you with us. She says hello to you, Michael, as well. Hello. Rita, 2017 grad, loving the IF life. Cannot, gotta get me a shirt like yours. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, you're welcome. You guys can find this on YouTube. I put them all on my YouTube channel. Again, this is a, runs a little athletic cut, so straight, but it is super cozy and warm um, and super cuddly. Uh, so I love putting this shirt on. Um, I got an extra large, so I would definitely get a big, go big on the size for sure. And then Nancy, 2019 grad, happy with the success in your IF program, using weights, more reps, and feeling fantastic. Awesome, Nancy, I love hearing that for sure. Um, um, Angel, just started watching you. I'm doing the 16, eight, three weeks in and 10 pounds down. That's fantastic, keep going, girlfriend. Time and consistency are your best friend with that. Um, um, I'm perimenopause and was fighting the good fight with the fridge before and losing. Now I'm winning. Angel, yeah, for sure. Just keep that fridge closed until you're ready to open up that feasting window. Kasia, just tuned in. September 2018 IF course and F3 course graduates. Uh, good to have you with us. Hopefully you're fasting long enough, feasting well enough, and training smart enough for you. Um, Francie, December 2017 grad from British Columbia. Love the sweatshirt too. If you ever do... And in Tiffany blue, I would be so in. Yeah, they didn't have it in that color because that's my jam color too, that Tiffany blue color. Uh, they just had it in this. Um, this is kind of cool because it's uh, like a, it's almost like a denim color blue with a little bit of white in it. So um, I absolutely love it. Um, let's see what else. Cassia, I turned 50 yesterday and my life is better than it's ever been. I love this lifestyle. My birthday present to myself was a keto mojo. Cassia, what a great birthday present for you for sure. And if you have any questions about that, let me know. I can help you get started with using it. Tamara, 2019 grad, love IF and listen often and feel great. I love it. Robin, uh, happy belated birthday, Cassia. Yes, happy belated birthday, Cassia, for sure. And then um, Valerie, I feasting for six instead of four hours. I'm feeling better for now. Yeah, good. You know, here's the thing that I say about the fasting long enough, feasting well enough is that 
You know, nothing is supposed to be so regimented all the time. So switching your fasting and feasting windows up is totally fine. What we really want to make sure is that we at least give ourselves an opportunity to experience a fasted state every day. We want to make sure that we give ourselves an opportunity to feast well on the foods that are going to um, serve us the best most of the time. And then we want to make sure that we have a very sound fitness routine that's going to keep our body healthy and moving forward. And then the rest of it, you ebb and flow with life for sure. So nothing has to be so regimented that you can't build in a little bit of flexibility and test some things out for yourself as well. Um, and then Danielle, happy or April 2018 grad and loved it. My husband and I just started IF together last week. I'm excited for him. Ooh, Danielle, we are excited for him too. There's nothing better than have a, having a family that is super open to what it is you're doing in your intermittent fasting lifestyle and then jumping on board with you. Michael and I um, have been doing this together for three years now, I think. And our kids jump on board too. I think one of the biggest gifts that this lifestyle provided for me as a mother was the comfort in knowing that I didn't have to shove food down my kids throat all the time and that breakfast is not the uh, best meal of the day or the best way to start your day um, and really laxing you know becoming a little bit more lax about letting my kids intuitively feed themselves and learn what it means to be in a fasted state and what that feels like and no longer using food as a system of reward or punishment or entertainment or those kind of things and letting them figure that out figure it out for themselves um, and hopefully that will be a gift for them as they move into adulthood and what they're going to do with their kids as well so having your husband do it's going to be super fun for you and your family uh for sure okay monica what do you think Think about longer fast like 24 and 36 I think when you're ready to do it I think that they're super beneficial but time and consistency is really the key so you don't want to go into prolonged or extended fasting in a panic or an emotional type of state to quickly lose weight extended and prolonged fasting should really be used to have a deeper healing experience with your body because if you go onto a water fast for a couple of days you're going to lose weight and as soon as you go back to putting food in your body you're going to gain weight and it's not that you've gained weight in a negative way it's just that now you have food in your body and you didn't have it before so you want to make sure if you're going to go into prolonged or extended fasting you do it with a mindset of healing your body and resetting some things and not for the sole purpose of losing weight because you will gain weight back and then you get into that diet type of mindset for sure uh anything else michael um, sue first time on the forum i am taking your course that begins on june 6th yay i can't wait to have you with us it's super super fun all the all the women who end up joining our course um are all super cool and i feel super blessed that we attract that type of tribe here in this community um it always ends up being a, an amazing group of women and they learn from each other and bounce ideas off each other and really accept one another for where they are in their uh, season of life and so you'll probably end up leaving the course with a friend or two um, and I think that that is the biggest blessing we have here in this community is that we are all super open and very welcoming to one another for sure. Um, Celeste finally caught you live. Girlfriends good to have you with us. Um, I'm in your May course and, and all the way in the Bahamas. Well, we are jealous that you're in the Bahamas and we're not there with you. And we're super stoked that you caught us live and I hope you're really enjoying uh, the time that you have in our course this month. Our May students are doing fantastic. Just finished the intermittent fasting week. A lot of you are just thriving in that fasted state and you're pretty shocked with yourself, which I'm super excited about that now you have that experience and that comfort in knowing that you can always put yourself in a fasted state. And you guys are gonna learn a lot about how to feast well for you um, this week. So keep on checking into that course and keep on learning for sure. So with that, I'm going to say uh, goodbye for today. I hope this was enlightening for some of you who are feeling like you have to do things perfectly by someone else's standard. Remember, aging successfully is how we determine that for ourselves as women. And that if we approach it with the I'm going to fast long enough to reverse some of those age related diseases that we're not happy with so we can balance out our hormones, that we're going to feast well enough so that we can support our next fast and really wake up every day looking and feeling our best and then training smart enough so that we have the opportunity to physically move into our future in a way that we have dreamed that we've wanted to do as we become aging women. 
super simple approach, but we have to make sure that we have that mindset to back it up because life's going to happen and that's where things start to get sticky for us. If you haven't ever joined our Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course, I would love to invite you. Our registration is open for our June 6th course, uh, so it'll be a perfect time to jump on in. My May students, I'm super proud of you, and all of my graduates who join in uh, to the conversation with us, I appreciate you more than you know. You are the reason this community is thriving, so thank you so much for all your support and for being willing to comment and share your journey as well. I will see you guys back here on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, where we'll have another discussion about intermittent fasting and today's aging woman.